uh, which is always shows the grizzly and the star. And just like the communist flag, you have the red star. And there's not one in a million people can tell you why the symbol of the bear is on the California flag. Most people will say, oh, well, that's the indigenous animal of such and such. And that is not the case. Again, the answer is to be found in astrology because this, the uh, bear with the star above it relates to Ursa Major, the bear that's floating up there. Yes, the seven stars of Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. And the red star is, of course, the pole star, Polaris. That is the real symbolism behind the California flag. It is an occult symbol with astrological information. And from that wonderful book, uh, Secret Architecture of Our Nation's Capital, there's a wonderful statement here. And he, I think that the implications of what he says here are absolutely incredible. When found in a text, the star determined or indicated to a reader that the group of hieroglyphs associated with it was related to spiritual matters. It was related to the heavens, to invisible energies, which the Greeks called etheric. Now, as I say, what he's saying here is amazing because the symbol of the star is found on the clothes of generals. It is found on the hellish machines of war. It is found in the designs of cities, and it is as on flags, absolutely countless thousands of flags. And this point, person is pointing out why you find it on these symbols. Talking about astrology, here's another very famous symbol of the lion and the unicorn, which is seen on heraldry and flags and insignias and even products all over the place. Uh, how many people realize that this is to do with the royal houses? When the sun ascends to its most northerly uh, position in the zodiac, it's in the houses of Cancer and Leo. Well, that's what the heraldry is showing. The symbol of the red lion is the symbol of Leo, and the pale white unicorn represented the moon, and the moon relates to the house of Cancer. Now, people who are Cancers by birth sign think that their symbol is the crab. That is a very modern uh, adaptation. The original symbol of um, Cancer was the scarabus beetle, the Egyptian scarabus beetle, which later gets corrupted into the crab, or even more as a purist, it's the white pale unicorn. So that is what you're looking at when you see the symbol on royalty. It's actually an astrological symbol. And in fact, many cities are designed on the circle of the zodiac. Here's St. Peter's, where you have an enormous amount of uh, symbolism uh, having to do with the stellar positions of heavens. Uh, you find in the clock towers, for instance, there's always a clock tower, you know, and usually the face of the clock is so high up. I mean, what purpose could it? Nobody can see it to tell the time, so why do you have it? Well, the big bands of the world and these clocks are to indicate that sidereal time is becoming terrestrialized. It's the transmittance of heavenly time into earthly time. And then even when they don't have a clock, they'll have a place called Times Square. Or Thames River, the River Thames. All goes back to the same principle. Uh, here is the geometry of a circle that represented the zodiac. So whenever you see any of these columns and obelisks, just realize that they're placed on geomantic PowerPoints to, to enhance energy. They're not just a commemoration stones. They're markers that are often aligned with the mountains and the surrounding topography or aligned with the heavens. And you find them all over the world, not just in Egypt, but in the modern cities, even in Paris. We have the famous Eiffel Tower, you see. And these stately homes and these stately buildings, it requires an awful lot of geometry to uh, build them, coming out of the ancient world. Some of them may have been moved to their present position from a sacred position yes, from or, before. Yes, or even built on top of more primitive Celtic sites. Not so much in America, but in England you'll find that the location was at one point uh, a very sacred druidic or, uh, you know, site for other religions. But absolutely make no doubt about it, the thinking and the thought that went into this and the, the designs all have a meaning. And then when you look at it, because it's in our space, when you look at it or when you go there, it's having a registering effect on your consciousness. And that, consci that uh, effect can be very positive or it can be also very negative, attributing to many uh, pernicious vices that we have. And it's very interesting, too, the connection with e Egypt. Their most sacred star was the star Sirius. Because uh, why was it sacred? Is because their year opened with Sirius. When Sirius rose in July in the sign of uh, Virgo Leo at that time, uh, then we, the Egyptians have what they call the opening of the year. But the hieroglyphic for the planet Sirius, meaning when they wanted to write the, the symbol of, of, of Sirius, they used a pentagram, an obelisk, and an oval. Those were the symbols of the planet Sirius in Egypt. Now, isn't it interesting that in Washington, D.C., we have exactly that, but not as a hieroglyphic, but actually carved in stone in the city of Washington. We have a pentagon. People have always wondered why on earth was that shape ever uh, you know, created in the first place. Well, now we have the answer. Not far away, we have the Washington Monument, which is the obelisk. 
and then we have a place called the Oval Office. Those three structures actually in stone on the topography of America are actually a hieroglyph for the, s the star Sirius. So one might ask, what is actually going on here? Serious business. Serious business, yeah. Now here we have another wonderful statement from that book. It says, that the extraordinary truth is that the very existence of the Washington Monument is intimately linked with the Egyptian star Sirius that the ancients represented in their sacred hieroglyphics as an obelisk as well as a star. How is it possible that this most important star of the ancient world should find itself, as it were, resurrected in the architecture of the United States? And this one we have, it says, in the course of that day, when the cornerstone of the Washington Monument was laid, the sun would have actually passed over Sirius. So not only was this the architects involved in commemorating the, the star Sirius, but we find that even with the laying of the cornerstone of Washington Monument, the sun was literally passing over the star Sirius. Mm -hmm. How come we didn't learn that in the history books? The Declaration of Independence. It says that computations clearly show that on the day of the Declaration of Independence was agreed in Philadelphia, the sun was on Sirius again. Of course, that's a coincidence, right? Now, Philadelphia, the very word Delphi, phila meaning love of, Delphi, wisdom. There's a whole concept there going back to the oracle at Delphi. And then we have a statement that says that the Mason who first signed the Declaration of Independence would have been aware of the particular significance of July 4th as a cosmic event. The day was the second in the so-called dog days which begin on July 3rd. So even the signing of the Declaration of Independence one day before or even the birth, day of birth of America, what are the dog days? Well, that is because again they refer to the rising of the star Sirius. So we're only touching on something here, and yet we've already got uh, tremendous significance. And you'll find obelisks and domes and ovals uh, all over the world, very close to observatories that have to do with uh, the stars. These images are all over the place. Another uh, concept coming out of Freemasonry is the idea of the Royal Arch. And of course, that's why you have arches in all the main cities of the world. And in fact, People may have noticed it in front of a civic building or a United Nations building or what have you. You'll see the symbol of three flags, you know, three flagpoles. That seemingly innocuous uh, symbol there of three flagpoles goes back to Egypt again because their hieroglyphic of three flags actually meant neater, which was the word for the gods. So that's why you find it in front of government buildings because often the people in the government buildings think of themselves literally as the new gods or the controllers. In a previous uh, show that I was on with you, uh, we pointed out the occult significance of the dollar sign, which is really, of course, the uh, cleverly designed Isis. Pushed together. Pushed together. And, of course, if you look at the symbol of Isis, the rods and the serpent, or sorry, the S is the serpent and the two uh, vertical lines, seen another way, really represent the caduceus of Hermes, which the medical profession are using. You see, there's a similarity there. Many scholars have been talking about the symbolism on the one dollar bill. And there is a tremendous symbolism on it. Instead of trying to earn one, one might want to take one out and just look at it and study one and ask yourself a question of what kind of symbolism is on it and why is an Egyptian pyramid and so on uh, on a dollar bill. And we have a very famous symbol of the eagle. And the eagle, I mean, the symbolism that goes into this is just uh, incredibly deep and it's beyond the scope of this presentation but the eagle is the symbol uh, of America because it has to do with the sign of Scorpio Scorpio is a very large area of sky it has 30 degrees in it like all the signs but there's many constellations there and the most important one to the ancient people that actually used to symbolize Scorpio in ancient times not anymore was the sign of Aquila the eagle if you open a book on the planospheres you will see a sign a constellation called Aquila the eagle and Scorpio, as astrologers know, has to do with power and money. And that's why it is a symbol of America, and that's why it's on a dollar bill. And we note the 13 yes. blue stars and within the circle. And it also has 13 little berries in the leaves, 13 leaves, 13 lines, 13 tail feathers, 13 arrows. The symbol of 13, again, because it has to do with the precinct, the 13th sign of the zodiac, which occultists know all about. The 13 levels of the pyramid and the eye above it. Because the Freemasons that I'm talking about are not the what we call the speculative Freemasons who come in uh, generally from ordinary professions, uh, well-meaning, charitable people, 
that's it's not those Freemasons that I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about the bloodline Freemasons who are 